Okay, good morning. Uh, what we have as a project is about five years ago, we purchased a big old barn that was left over from a whiskey distillery named Dillinger Distillery, located in western Pennsylvania. There's one, the one main barn that's left contains about 70,000 board feet of this roughly 120 year old oak. Uh, this oak is really desirable for flooring, but in order to make it into flooring, we have to cut it along the edge, all the way down. This is a very short piece. Most of the pieces are a lot longer, like this one here. This one's only 9 feet. Uh, the majority of it that we have is 13 feet long, which is a very big piece of wood. There's two problems cutting it into flooring. One is it's very hard as far as wood goes and two as this you can see with this piece it has a lot of the old-fashioned cut nails in it these old cut nails are extremely brittle so a lot of times instead of pulling the nails out what they would do is they would simply hit them with a hammer and snap them off so for example this hole here you don't really see anything in it but there could be a piece of a nail hiding in there so most of the time what you'd have to do is you've got to dig out around the nail like this one expose it grab a hold of it and yank it out that takes a very long time it also ruins a lot of the wood in the process so what we tried to do is we tried to figure out if we could make a saw that would cut through the wood and the nails at the same time just basically leave the nails in the wood and cut right through them so we found actually some blades on the market that are made for this they're usually called pallet blades because disposing of old pallets you've got to cut through the oak pallet as well as the fasteners the nails and staples that are holding it together so this particular blade is by Lennox it's called pallet master blade for the purpose of cutting pallets we bought a fairly large blade this blade is about an inch and a quarter wide and somewhere around 0.042 inches thick and the teeth on this vary between five and eight teeth per inch it also has a little bit of a staggered rake to the, the teeth I'm going to try to give uh, people cutting this type of antique wood the uh, information that we have found because we haven't really found that much information online so the saw we designed is right here. This is the conveyor that conveys the wood up to the saw. The conveyor is approximately 20 feet long. I'll get up to the saw in a minute. There it is up there. The conveyor consists of two pieces. Basically a simple bed made out of C-channel and the pusher. The pusher is right here. This is just a sacrificial piece of uh, 2 by 8 it is designed to push on the wood and keep it going up into the blade. It's powered by a chain. There's a chain front and back. Here's the back chain. Chain travels through the tubes all the way up to the saw. Here are pinch rollers to guide the wood into the blade. They're adjustable. This pinch roller is fixed. That'll be aligned with the blade. If you want to cut uh, one inch or one and eight and eighth inch slabs, you set it for that width. And this one you can adjust for the size of the wood. If the wood is a three inch piece, you have to adjust that back just a smidge. If it's a four inch piece, obviously a little more. Here's the power plant for the pusher. There's a pretty basic DC motor. It's a geared motor doesn't go super fast but that's even geared down even more through another gearbox this gearbox is a 20 to 1 gearbox which comes out here and this is a slip clutch in case we hit a big nail in one of those pieces of wood it won't continuously push the wood into the blade that would obviously snap the blade so this is a little bit of a safety device to keep us from snapping blades the clutch will slip keeping the wood back not putting as much force on it here's the same pallet master blade this is the saw 
The saw is a pretty basic design. It's about seven foot tall. It's a top guillotine design. The top wheel can slide back and forth. The tension is placed on the blade by that jack screw up there. It's a one inch jack screw. We can put enough tension on the blade pretty much to snap it if we wanted to, but obviously we don't. It's a 45 pound lifting plate. We converted that into a pulley for this saw. Took a little bit to do, but not too bad. We had to dress the outside edge. We had to drill some relief holes to balance it. And then we had to taper the inside in order to fit it to the two inch shaft. The blade comes down. We have it fixtured with some blade guides. We have it fixtured between a couple of cam pulleys. There's also another cam pulley in the back for back pressure. And we have an identical setup down below. There's the bottom pulley hanging out down there. It's a little hard to see. Going around the back of the saw. There's the top with the jack screw sticking out the top. All the tubing is three by three by quarter. There's the guillotine, two inch pillow block bearings supporting the top shaft. This is the idler. And the drive is down below. There's the drive bearings. Drive bearings are powered by a five horsepower three phase motor. And the green there is a 8 to 1 gear reduction, planetary gear, won't lock up like a worm gear. And this is where the information comes in. The information is, is how fast do you feed the wood in to the blade to be efficient, but yet not snap the blade. And the second thing is, is how fast you run the blade, or blade speed. This particular pallet blade, I think, is designed for a maximum of somewhere around 2,000 feet per minute. We've designed this saw for half that. We figure if we hit a piece of metal at 2,000 feet, we would pretty much snap the blade, so we kept it at 1,000. We can go faster. We installed a Mitsubishi frequency inverter an A200. This is capable of powering a seven and a half horsepower motor and this frequency inverter gives us the ability to control the speed of the motor. Uh, what's also nice is we can feed in uh, 220 single phase into this inverter and it outputs three phase which is a real big advantage. So the controls. The controls we mounted on a podium so the podium can be moved. We'll eventually bolt it to the floor through that plate. There's our cord bundle, which we'll tape up when we're done or and when it's in its final location. So the pusher. The pusher is on a dial so we can change the speed of the pusher. We can make it basically zero or about maybe, I think it's probably about four or five feet per minute. The saw just on or off and we can also control the saw speed with the inverter. The other thing we did as a safety device, we haven't tested this yet, if we see a nails coming up what we can do is we flip this switch and instead of having to dial it in this will immediately cut the frequency in half which will make the saw run at half speed which is somewhere around 500 feet per second. 